Hello and welcome to Ask the Source. I'm your host, Josh Reinstein, and we're here in yet another beautiful day on our rooftop studio in Jerusalem. My guest today is Ari Briggs, International Director of Regavim. Ari, thanks for being on the show. Thanks, Josh. Thanks for having me. All right, tell our viewers a little bit about what is Regavim. Regavim is a uh, non-government organization, NGO, that was established in 2006 to look after the land, the land that uh, we understood was being stolen from underneath us uh, by various different elements. And what we do is the research, and then we report on that research to the authorities and try and convince the authorities and, and that they enforce the laws of the land. Who, who is stealing the land in Israel, and how are they doing it? Okay, so 93% of Israel pre-1967 is government-owned land. So the government has obviously a big job to try and uh, look after that land because th that's such a large number. And Israel is a small country which has had so many issues uh, to deal with, really ignored that land. So uh, you've got uh, Arabs in the north, you've got Bedouin in the south, you've got uh, in Yehud and Shomron a lot of Arabs moving from area A and area B into area C and taking whatever land they can get their hands on. Why isn't the government stopping them the minute they start building these structures? Okay, so first of all, we've got a situation where it is has reached a critical mass already. Uh, there are at least 2,000 new structures built illegally in the Negev each year. Total today, you've got around 30,000 structures in Yudin Shomron. You've got overall in the country around 100,000 illegal structures, some of which have demolition orders on them, some of which don't. That is a number that just can't be dealt with uh, on a on a one by one basis. We saw two weeks ago in Wadi Ara a house that was knocked down. It received its demolition order 37 years ago. For 35 years, it was ignored. Every time the police wanted to go in there, ordered by the courts, there was a stop order on it because the owner went to court. Time after time after time, it was stopped. In the end, it was destroyed demolished uh, two weeks ago after Regavim got involved and pushed for two years to get it demolished and 1500 people came out and rioted they closed down the schools for a day they closed down all commercial uh, business activities for two days this is what happens when you try and demolish one house can you imagine trying to do it with this large number that really exists here in Israel but it seems like there's two laws there's a law for Jewish citizens and there's a law <coughs> for everyone else because if I were to build a balcony on my house illegally they would tear it down in a minute yeah how is that possible in the Jewish state of Israel yeah so Josh don't get me wrong there are Jews that will try and build a patio a balcony add something onto their house but pretty much immediately they'll get a letter from the local council telling them that we've caught you doing something illegal we're telling you to knock it down as soon as possible we're fining you a significant fine and because you've done something illegally we're going to send over the inspectors to check the rest of your place to see what else you've done illegally now that happens immediately and that letter has a large effect on the Jewish population in this country, they will immediately pull back, start fixing things up. They don't want to be caught, they don't want to have the fine, they don't want to have to go to court and have uh, potential uh, charges uh, drawn against them. The difference is, with the Arab population, they're already passe to those type of letters, they don't mean anything to them, and they know the law is not going to be enforced against them. Why is the law enforced against them? Okay, so we have a situation in Israel where you've got a system while let's say we were building a country at the same time there was the academia uh, the bureaucracy government bureaucracy and and the court system was taken over by this uh, liberal environment that had this belief that the minorities in this country were badly done by because you know this was going to be a Jewish country and building a, a fine Jewish country here but you've also and the, of course full rights for minorities are protected and and, and enforced but they're given a, a freeway they're given a let's say get out of jail uh, free pass in terms of law enforcement first of all there's this liberal environment we don't want to enforce it too much because I hey, they've had a tough time the second thing is when they did try to enforce the law they were faced with violence they were faced, as I mentioned, in Wadi Ara just two weeks ago with 1,500 people on the street uh, demonstrating against the demolition of a totally illegal building that was cast illegal 37 years ago and each and every court case since then. So people will just back off. Law enforcement backs up. The police station head backs off. The head of the regional police backs off. The government backs off because they don't want these images getting out and the pressure being applied from overseas. Look what you're doing to your poor minorities. 
you know, you guys have been instrumental in trying to push a law, a legislation in the Knesset, in the Parliament of Israel, mm -hmm. to try to stop this illegal activity. Tell us a little bit about the law. We've been involved in a lot of laws, Josh. Uh, this recent one was trying to uh, settle the Bedouin in uh, the Negev, in, uh, get them off illegally grab land into developed areas and the government is planning to put billions of shekels into developing the Negev for to raise the socioeconomic uh, status of the Bedouin there but the first thing to do to offer the services to give the services that every citizen in our state expects the water the, the sewerage electricity the schooling the, the the hospitals they need to be in an area that this can be offered and this law uh, we've been involved in, we're trying to get some amendments put in as well because it's not, it doesn't have the law enforcement, it doesn't have the teeth to actually enforce what it's trying to achieve, which is to redevelop the area, make sure the Bedouin are getting those services and offering all 100% of those Bedouin with the services they expect from a Western society. All right, there are literally tens of millions of people watching this show. What message do you have for our viewing audience? Josh, what we know is that what people see overseas on television when they hear about Israel on the general media, not on your show, Josh, but on the general media is everything bad about Israel. What people need to understand, literally, it is the opposite of what they're hearing. We're trying to build a beautiful, healthy country that respects all its citizens. And to do that, we need to enforce laws. We need to have equal application of the law for every single person in the country. And that's what we're pushing for. And we hope that your viewing audience understands that that's what it's about, is uh, applying the law equally. So please take a look at our website, see what we're doing, follow us up on Facebook, and uh, things should go well. Thank you, Ari, for being on the show. And thank you for tuning in to Ask the Source. I'm your host, Josh Reinstein. Now back to the studio.